and uh, let's uh, move to the video of the um, of Luisa's Damiano, Luisa Damiano's talk. Uh, maybe I can just quickly introduce her very quickly. Now I'm in the disaster, yeah, living disaster. Yeah. So the next speaker is uh, uh, Luisa, Luisa Damiano, who is um, a, a philosopher. Actually, she uh, founded the Epistemology of Sciences and, the uh, and Science of Artificial Group at the University of uh, Bergamo. And she actually wrote a couple of books. Uh, so you, she already wrote one, is writing a couple of books uh, on uh, uh, social cognitive and developmental uh, robotics, which uh, I, I think she is still working on it, but uh, uh, they are somehow scheduled. Why is it she used this expression under contract? So let's, uh, she actually, she could not uh, attend directly. She, so we have a recorded talk that uh, Nathan will air in uh, a minute. If I release the, the Good morning. I am Lisa Damiano, a researcher in political science at the University of Bergamo in Italy. And today I would like to propose the second part of the Shanghai lecture dedicated to the synthetic modeling of life and cognition. The synthetic modeling of life and cognition, which can be considered as an emergent form of the scientific modeling, originally developed in the 30s within the context of cybernetics, and consisting in the modeling of natural processes, in our case in particular biological and cognitive processes, through artificial or synthetic systems, systems which can be software systems or computer simulations, hardware systems or robotic platforms, or wetware systems or artificial chemical systems, which means that the main disciplines involved in the synthetic modeling of life and cognition are computer science, robotics, and in particular cognitive and developmental robotics, and synthetic biology, which is the discipline that will be introduced in the next lecture by Professor Pierluigi Luisi. The perspective on the synthetic modeling of life and cognition proposed in this lecture is an epistemological perspective, which means that this lecture focuses on the capability and the ways in which the synthetic modeling can contribute to the scientific knowledge of life and cognition. While in the first part of the lecture I focus on the epistemological features of the synthetic modeling, considering the epistemological features of its methodology of reference, usually called the synthetic methodology. In this second part of the lecture, I will briefly introduce a set of criteria of relevance for the synthetic models of biological and cognitive processes based on a theory of life and cognition, which is widely used by the sciences of the artificial. That is the theory of autopoiesis that I will briefly introduce later. Today, I will start to uh, introduce this set theory useful to evaluate the relevance of the synthetic models uh, on the basis of uh, a brief summary of the contents of the first part of the lecture in which we consider the different appellation of the main methodology of reference of the synthetic modeling and more in general of the sciences of the artificial conceived as all the sciences that are modeling natural processes through artificial systems. These different appellation are synthetic methodology, but also the synthetic approach or the constructive approach. And I also introduced the methodological principle, which is usually linked to this methodology, whose basic idea is that if we want to fully understand a phenomenon, we have to try to artificially generate this phenomenon. We have different version of this principle, Feynman's version, what I cannot create, I cannot understand, Pfeiffer and Scheyer version, understand it by building, and also a version uh, proposed within the context of synthetic biology by Professor Luisi, we can fully understand only when we can synthesize, but the idea is always the same. If we want to fully understand a process or a system, we have to recreate it. 
As time I also indicated which is the main goal of the synthetic methodology that is allowing the sciences of the artificial to overcome the technical engineering approach and to actively contribute to the scientific understanding of life and cognition by creating an interdisciplinary loop linking uh, the sciences of the artificial with the natural sciences of life and cognition. I briefly described the general structure of this loop and presented an example, a concrete example, a concrete version of this interdisciplinary loop, an example in which this loop is made between the natural sciences of development and developmental robotics. And today, Professor Luis in his lecture will introduce another example of this interdisciplinary loop, this time linking biology and synthetic biology. In the first part of the lecture, I indicated uh, that the synthetic methodology is used by the sciences of the artificial to experimentally explore aspects of life and cognition of biological and cognitive processes or systems that are difficult to be experimentally explored or are not accessible at all in natural scenarios of research. A typical example is uh, the phenomenon of the origin of life, which is clearly not accessible in natural scenarios of research. In this case, we can use synthetic methodology. How does it work? So basically, um, this methodology proposes to incorporate or to embody scientific hypotheses on life and cognition in working artificial models of the target systems, then to situate or to embed these models in a natural or in an artificial uh, environment in such a way to build an experimental scene, and then to analyze the behavior produced by the target system in, uh, um, within, in the interaction with this environment. So basically what the synthetic methodology is proposing is to make operational the scientific hypothesis on biological and cognitive processes in order to test these hypotheses, to further elaborate these hypotheses or when necessary to re-elaborate these uh, hypotheses. So some of the main characteristics of this methodology that we considered last time where the basic research questions, how does it work, but also why these are not that. That is uh, a focus on not only the internal mechanisms of the target systems, but also on general mechanisms and principles of living and cognitive systems. That is, this methodology proposes to build models not only of existing biological and cognitive systems, but also of possible biological and cognitive systems. So, so uh, the emergence approach characterizing the synthetic methodology, that is, the idea that life and cognition are emergent properties uh, of biological and cognitive processes, that is, properties that are relying not on the components taken separately, but in the correlation in living and cognitive system. And that, basically, this implies that to explore life and cognition means not to reduce biological and cognitive system to their parts, but to recreate living and cognitive system and their phenomenology by recreating these emergent properties. And another characteristic of the synthetic methodology that we consider in the first part of the lecture is that this methodology emphasizes the active role of the observer in the scientific research in the sense that this methodology does not refer anymore to the classical idea of the scientific observer as a, an absolute spectator of nature, which is neutral uh, with regard to the reality it is exploring, considered a, as a reality independent from the observer itself. Uh, within the context of the application of the synthetic methodology, the observer, the scientific observer, is considered as the constructor of the object uh, she explores. And in this sense, it, it is explicit that uh, the observer explores objects that are not independent from the observer. 
in this sense, the synthetic methodology is uh, considered as a methodology or can be considered as a methodology of a nascent uh, constructivist view of science. It is uh, the methodology of a science that recognizes itself uh, as uh, a science which produces the objects of its, uh, of its exploration, does not simply um, represent objects that are independent from the scientific observer. The last characteristic of the synthetic methodology that we consider in the first part of the lecture is uh, an open issue. Uh, due to the fact that the synthetic methodology requires the scientific observer to define the scientific system it produces uh, as chemical, physical, robotic or digital and more in general as material models of the natural systems and process uh, that uh, is exploring. But this methodology does not provide yet an explicit or a systematic reflection on the relevance of these synthetic models for the scientific exploration of biological and cognitive processes, which is a critical deficiency if the sciences of the artificial intend to integrate this methodology, that is the synthetic methodology, among the scientific methodologies that the scientific community recognizes as sources of valuable insights. In this sense, defining criteria of relevance for the synthetic models of biological and cognitive processes is uh, uh, particularly important for the sciences of the artificial and in particular for the synthetic modeling community as this allows this community to address critical open questions related to the relevance of these models, such as in what sense and under which conditions artificial systems, that is software, hardware, wetware systems, can be considered as scientific models of natural living and cognitive systems, or in what sense and in which, in which ways, in which conditions, these systems, these models, can help science to reach significant advancement in its exploration of uh, life and cognition or on biological and cognitive processes under inquiry. To try to give a first answer to these uh, critical questions, I will briefly introduce a set of criteria of relevance for synthetic models of biological and cognitive system or processes that I developed while I was working within a team of developmental robotics, a team led by uh, Lola Cagnamero at the University of Hertfordshire, on the basis of a theory of life and cognition that I mentioned before, the theory of autopoiesis, um, developed by Umberto Maturana and Francisco Varela uh, um, around the 70s, and uh, which is a theory of life and cognition that has a uh, um, two uh, important characteristics. On one side, it is an emergentist theory of life and cognition, and on the another side, this theory is developed by uh, Maturana and Varela. This view, this emergentist view of life and cognition is uh, transformed by Maturana and Varela in an explicit constructivist theory of scientific knowledge, that is, on a theory of what is scientific knowledge as a form of knowledge that constructs its object of research. Uh, and, and according to this theory, the, scientific, the synthetic methodology, which is described by this theory at the theoretical level, is the appropriate methodology to investigate both theoretically and experimentally life and cognition. These two characteristic, characteristics are uh, making of the uh, theory of autopoiesis an epistemological framework, a set of principles of knowledge that um, is particularly interesting for application of the synthetic approach that are based on the theory of autopoiesis and its developments such as the Varelian in action, uh, which is widely used uh, currently uh, in the robotic modeling of cognitive processes. As uh, uh, this theory in this case uh, would uh, self-applicate uh, itself, in the sense, would um, uh, propose the grounding for this synthetic modeling of living and cognitive processes, and would also provide uh, epistemological principles to evaluate uh, the relevance of the, of the models uh, it produces through this grounding. 
In particular, the theory of autopoiesis proposes epistemological principles that are allowing us to produce a set of criteria of relevance for synthetic models, which define a range of different forms of relevance for these models with regard to the scientific knowledge of biological and cognitive processes. The first of these um, epistemological principles is an operational principle uh, of uh, the scientific explanation, according to which to explain a phenomenon is to provide a mechanism able to produce this phenomenon. It is a principle that, as we can easily see, does not impose any constraints on the biological plausibility of the mechanism. And in this sense, it uh, tends to generate merely imitative models that we can call phenomenological relevant models, as they simply produce the uh, phenomenology under inquiry. So on the basis of this principle, we can develop a criterion for synthetic models, according to which a synthetic model is relevant at a phenomenological level if it provides a mechanism which produces, according to explicit parameters, the same phenomenology as the living or cognitive phenomenology we are exploring. A second element proposed by the theory of autopoiesis useful to develop criteria of relevance is a principle introduced by Maturana and Varela to evaluate the explanatory power of operational scientific explanations, according to which a better scientific explanation provides a mechanism able to produce the, phenomenal, the phenomenon under inquiry and also other phenomena that are not explicitly considered while defining the mechanism. Where uh, evidently, this principle does not impose any specific constraints on the biological plausibility, as the first principle that we consider. It simply indicates a di direction of evolution of phenomenologically relevant synthetic model, models, that is, the direction of the growing operational explanatory power of this model. On the basis of this principle, we can uh, make a distinction between different kinds of phenomenological relevant models. So that is, on one side, we can consider basic phenomenological models, that is, models which produce the same phenomenology as the living or cognitive phenomenology under inquiry. On the other side, we can consider progressive phenomenological models that are models which produce also other phenomena that are not explicitly considered while defining the mechanism. But considering the current production based on the application of the synthetic methodology, we can also distinguish a third category of uh, phenomenological relevant models that are useful imitative models that we can define as interactive phenomenological models. That are models that by producing the same phenomenology as the living or cognitive phenomenology under inquiry, engage natural systems in interactive dynamics that are interesting for the scientific exploration of the phenomenology under inquiry. And these models can be considered synthetic tools to experimentally manipulate and explore in natural systems the phenomenology under inquiry. For example, we have, uh, uh, as uh, um, Professor Luisi will briefly uh, explain, we have uh, uh, synthetic cells, artificial chemical systems that are uh, imitating some behaviors of natural cells that we can consider as synthetic cells that are uh, able to exchange chemical and in this sense to communicate with natural cells. And we can consider the synthetic cells as synthetic tools to experimentally manipulate and study in natural cells the phenomenology under required, that is uh, um, cell communication, for example. A third element uh, proposed by the theory of autopoiesis, useful for the creation of criteria of relevance for the synthetic models of living and cognitive processes, is the autopoietic distinction originally introduced by Piaget in a book called uh, Biologie et Connaissance, 
a distinction between the organization and the structure of living and cognitive systems, according to which to belong to the class of living and cognitive systems means to present the same organization, that is, the same dynamical relational frame between the components, but not necessarily the same structure, that is, the same components or the same aggregate of components, as living or cognitive system. This distinction has a, an evident relevant implication according to which a synthetic system which presents the same organization, that is, the same relational frame between the components, but not the same structure, that is, not the same components or the same aggregate of components as living and cognitive systems, belongs to the class of living and cognitive systems. This uh, distinction, then, uh, through this implication, proposes a criterion for um, artificial, synthetic or alternative forms of life. That is, to be considered as a living system, a system has to present the same organization of living systems, which is a strong criterion to assess the biological plausibility of synthetic models and says that to explore, synthetic system, to, uh, to explore a synthetic system presenting the same organization of living systems basically boils down to explore a system belonging to the class of living or cognitive systems. On the basis of this distinction, then, we can formulate a second criterion of relevance for synthetic models, according to which a synthetic model is relevant at an organizational level if it presents, according to an explicit theory of biological or cognitive organization, the same organization as living and cognitive systems. Of course, it is a criterion that can be satisfied only in a relative way, that is, only with reference to one or more theories of biological and cognitive organization, and always in an approximate way, that is, um, an approximation due to the limits of the theories, to the wide variety of their interpretations, and the limited possibilities of its or their implementation, where always means that uh, uh, um, this is regardless of technological advancement, it is, it is necessary that this criterion can be satisfied in a relative way. So this table shows uh, an overview of the different forms of relevance that uh, synthetic models can uh, display on the basis of this uh, criterion. You can see in particular that if um, the first criterion and the second criterion are not satisfied, we don't have any form of relevance. If the second criterion is not satisfied by the first uh, is satisfied, we have basic phenomenological relevance, that is, merely imitative models, models that are simply producing the phenomenon under inquiry, but are not uh, biologically plausible. Then we have uh, progressive phenomenological relevance. We have imitative models with a relatively high degree of operational explanatory power or plausibility, in the sense that besides producing the same phenomenology as the biological or cognitive phenomenology under inquiry, they produce also other phenomena that are not taken in consideration while uh, defining the mechanism producing the phenomenology under inquiry. And then we have interactive phenomenological relevance, that is, models which could be considered as synthetic tools useful to explore some aspects of the natural phenomenology in natural systems that are interactive with these artificial systems. When um, the second principle is uh, uh, satisfied, quindi the second criterion of relevance is satisfied, the one related to the organization of uh, biological and cognitive processes, we can have a basic organizational relevance, that is, artificial models belonging to the class of living and cognitive systems as they display the same organization according to specific theories of biological or cognitive organization of these systems, but th that are not producing the phenomenology under inquiry, so maybe we can have new biological and cognitive systems according to this um, principle. 
We can also have a basic relevance in the proper sense when we have artificial models useful to study synthetically the phenomenology under inquiry is due to the class of living and cognitive system according to the second criterion, the organizational criterion, and produce the phenomenology under inquiry. And then we can have interactive relevance in the proper sense when this second class of systems, artificial models that display the same organization of uh, biological and cognitive systems and produce the phenomenology under inquiry results result useful to explore aspects of uh, the natural phenomenology under inquiry also in natural system as they can engage this system in uh, interactive dynamics that are useful to study this phenomenology in natural systems. So this is a first proposal of a set of criteria of relevance and we can try to apply to this criteria and the related different form of relevance uh, to the synthetic models proposed in the next lecture. In fact, Professor Luisi will present models of minimal cells that are based on the theory of autopoiesis and in this sense uh, um, synthetic models that are particularly interesting for the application of this uh, criteria of relevance that are based on the theory of autopoiesis based on the theory of autopoiesis and in this sense um, 